mean, this is the year for you. This has been amazing. The reaction has been great to the show. Um, people seem to be uh, picking up what we're putting down, and, and we're excited to kind of bring season two where we're turning up the heat a little, I think. Well, Megan is set up like a Jocelyn Hyde character, and then it turns out she's two separate people. Don't tell anyone that I yet. Is the screeners are out. Yes, they are. I know, but there are people. I'm not telling. I'm not <laughs> walking outside okay, to yell. Thank you. But yeah. I can yell it at you, right? Yes, I'm yes. just kidding. Yell it all. Um, <laughs> Why'd you guys choose to go that route instead? You know what? I feel like we've seen the Jekyll and Hyde story a lot, and I felt like we have such a smart audience, so I feel like there's this game of Taekwondo going on with them, <laughs> and we wanted to see if we could kind of trick them into thinking they're, they know what the story we're going to tell is, and then when you have an actress like Emma Lahana, if you can get her on screen twice yeah. as much, go for it. Will we get a Mr. Jekyll at all in that season? You might have already seen Mr. Jim, but I you were gonna see some uh, some some uh, deep cuts, I guess, uh, this year and beyond. So what are the challenges for you for this second season? What are the challenges for you? Uh, you know, the second season, I'm I take them way too seriously. I'm a big television fan, and like I think the best seasons of television have been the second season. It's like West Wing season two, Buffy season two, Alias season two. You know, it's like it's. That's kind of where you define your show. So it's been a challenge, but it's been a good opportunity. I think last year we cast these two actors who I didn't know very well. And um, <laughs> now I know them better. As you can see by my really short massage I just got. Um, but um, I learned over the course of the first season that they can do anything. So it was really exciting for me and the writers to get back in the writer's room and be like, now that we know Olivia Holt can do anything, now that we know Aubrey can make you feel the way he feels, we were able to kind of throw him in more complicated stories, put him in more danger, um, kind of create more emotional complexity than I initially thought even creating the show. Um, you guys spoke about last year how much New Orleans influenced the season. How has it influenced the second season? In a big way. Um, we still kind of, Voudon is kind of like our spiritual baseline for a lot of stuff. So Aubrey, by way of Voudon, Tyrone, by way of Voudon, is learning how to... Um, how to control his teleportation a little better. And we're also dealing with some of the issues that touch New Orleans because it's so close to the highway system. Um, we're dealing with human trafficking a little. It's kind of our, our real life villain that's peppering um, some of our stories with our more uh, accentuated villains. Will we get any runaways crossovers? I am working very hard to try to make that happen. That's all I can say before Marvel shoots me. But it would be fun. I mean, we uh, Josh and Stephanie and I always talk about how great it was when we started reading Runaways when we were younger. Cloak and Dagger just show up really early, and it's uh, it feels like they're all in the same sandbox. And Jeff is a, a great boss, so it would be nice. Um, we're all trying to make it happen. We said that um, Tyrone's character is going through a bit of a spiritual journey. Can we expect Tandy to be going through something? Absolutely. Tandy, Tandy is going to have probably her defining arc this season. I think she's going to start off in a place where she's helping out her mother, who is a victim of abuse. And she's got certain attitudes about women who are abused or women who are victims. That might not be proper. So this whole season is about Tandy aligning herself with that kind of putting herself in someone else's shoes and becoming a patron saint of something. I don't want to spoil too much, but um, she's, um, we, because Olivia is so good, we put her through the emotional ringer and see how she comes out. And I think it's a really, hopefully a really unique um, hero's journey. They're at the end of episode 10, I, I called her and I was like, Peter Parker might be my second favorite superhero. So it, it, what Olivia does and what Aubrey does right now, um, it's pretty impressive. If you could have any Marvel character crossover onto Cloak and Dagger, who would it be? Spider-Man. <laughs> I mean, that's where that's where they came up. That was their origin, right? In Spectacular Spider-Man. And I think I always had so much fun when you just be reading a Spidey comic and all of a sudden they'd show up and they'd always just start fighting, which was kind of fun. You could do that back then. But um, I think it would be hopefully with uh, with Miles Morales coming into town and every company buying every other company, maybe someday that'll be a reality. Can you can give us a hint about what Mina will be going through? Yes. Um, we first see Mina in episode three, and she's kind of trying to figure out what happened that night. 
and she's kind of in a similar path to Mayhem going through some post-traumatic, you know, she went through some things, she was a bit possessed, um, so now she's going to try to save the world in a very different way, um, and so she's kind of hell-bent on figuring something out at right about the right time for her to cross with Tangent Town. Also being in Pixar movies, apparently, because Ali, <laughs> Ali Maki is awesome. Thank you guys so much. Wonderful, thank you.